Yo, what's going on guys? Today we got so many cool things. We're getting a new fossil support. We're getting new support for not only Egyptian gods, but a bunch of the other divine beast god cards, plus like the wiki race. And I'm really hyped about this. Plus on top of that, we're getting more support for the Princess Cologne archetype deck. And on top of that, we got more plants. Like this is literally so many awesome support cards coming out for a bunch of archetypes. And if you're excited about that, drop a like on this video, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to check out is the new Cologne support, as when that came out, a lot of people were interested in it because of the uh, really cool artwork, but it never really took off. So the first card is going to be a vanilla monster. So this is uh, Doll Monster Girl Chan or Miss Mad Chen over here. Uh, it's just a vanilla level four, but there, don't worry, there's actual support. <laughs> it's not just vanilla monsters, but the whole archetype is kind of based around uh, vanillas at the end of the day. But uh, anyways, zero, zero. Uh, it's going to be a level 4 light fairy normal monster. And then we have the doll monster bear bear. And it's going to actually be a 0, zero level 4 wind beast normal monster. Next up though, we have the grandpa Demito. Um, it is going to be a level 1 dark spellcaster effect monster with 0, zero for the stats. It says that you can only use each... Uh, of this card's name first and second effects once per turn. The first part of it says you can detach one material from your Princess Cologne to special summon up to two normal monsters with zero uh, attack or defense from your graveyard as level eight dark monsters. And this one was kind of reminds me of like some type of like Fright Fur or Fluffles where they could become dark. And then the second part of it says if your exceed monster activates an effect by detaching material or materials that was originally a normal monster, you can target that exceeds monster and one monster opponent controls, destroy that opponent's monster. And if you do, Look, damage to your opponent equal to, uh, to that exceeds monsters rank times 300. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So you get to do some burn and on top of that, uh, get rid of potentially another card. This could actually open up the doors to maybe some OTK plays, but at the end of the day, I don't think this is going to make the deck insane already, but let's check out the rest of the support. Next up, we have Doll Happiness, which is a continuous spell card that reads, uh, when this card resolves, you get to add one Grandpa Demito or Box of Friends from your deck to your hand. Okay, so it is support for that archetype. Again, it just didn't get that much love. The second part of it uh, says, monsters your opponent controls cannot target monsters you control with zero attack or defense for attacks while you control Princess Cologne. The third effect is, once per turn, you can destroy one monster you control or in your hand. If you do, send one doll monster card from your deck to the graveyard. Also, you cannot special monsters for the, uh, from the extract for the rest of the turn, except for exceed monsters. Okay, so, Going over Princess Cologne, because I think it's been so long since any of you guys have really seen this, right? Um, uh, what does her effect even do, right? Uh, so, it's two level four monsters, and it says, when this card exceeds someone, you can target a box of friends in graveyard, it's supposed to not target, and you control another monster your opponent cannot target this card uh, with uh, uh, four attacks, uh, a, a, with card effects or for attacks. Oh, so you can't even target it for attacks in general. Okay. And then a face up normal monster controls through a battle by card effect and send to the graveyard. You attach a material from this card to summon a normal monster uh, from your deck or graveyard in face up defense position. Okay. That's kind of cool. Um, again, I. I don't know where this deck is really going with this. If they get more support, obviously it's going to make it better. But at the moment, I don't see this being super OP or meta. Next up, guys, the plants, the Sun Avalons. This is an archetype that I really felt like needed a lot more support as well. Um, anyways, next up, we have the Sun Avalon Melias over here. It is a Link 3 Earth Plant uh, Link Effect Monster, zero attack, and the Link Zones are going to be in the left top and the right. Its materials are two plus plant monsters, including a link monster. If this card is link summon, you get to spell summon one Sunseed Genus Loki from your graveyard. That's the vanilla. Um, and then the second part of it says that it can't be targeted for attacks, but does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. The third part of it says once per turn, you get to target one of your sun vine link monsters that this card points to. This turn, it can attack a number of times up to the number of sun avalon link monsters you control. Okay, the deck already has potential to get a lot of damage in already, so I think what it needs more negations. They only really have like one trap that is a really decent disruption. But next up though, we have the Sun Avalon Daf Daphne. Link to Earth, Plant Link, Effect Monster, Zero Attack, Link Zones are going to be in the left and the right. The materials are two plant monsters, and it says that you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. The first effect is it cannot be targeted for attacks, but does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. Second part is you contribute one monster, then target two 
plant, link monsters in the graveyard, except for Sun Avalon Daphne, and return them to the extra deck. So you already have recyclability, but a lot of people were already maxing out on the Avarice already. So this part of it, I would say, doesn't really make the deck from where it was standing before to like really meta or anywhere near that. Uh, but let's check out the last support card for them. The Sunbind Crossbreed Continuous spell card that says you can only activate the first effect of this card's name once per turn. The first part of it says you can attribute one link monster, then target one plant monster in your graveyard, except for the attributed monster in Special Summon, but its effects are negated. So that's a decent little card actually, because it lets you definitely use it as a stepping stone for other plays, and it lets you bring back some specific monsters that could be really beneficial. Even though it does negate the effects, you're again, just using it as a stepping stone for other plays. Next up though, this was kind of random. It's just another Infernity card support. Um, so anyways, this is the uh, Void Cauldron. It is a continuous uh, trap card that says, if an Infernity monster or monsters and or level eight dark dragon monster or monsters you control would be destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can banish one Infernity card from your graveyard instead. The second part of it says, if you have any cards in your hand, you have to send this card to your uh, to the graveyard. I feel like this card is just kind of a wasted space at the end of the day. Like, does anyone even think that this card is like viable? Like, why not just run another card that would go ahead and protect your, like all your cards? Like you can run my body as a shield even, uh, cause it's very specific that uh, it has to be an Inferni or a Dark Dragon uh, monster that is specifically level eight. Like you could just run so many other cards that would just protect you in general over running this really conditional cards. And then on top of that, <laughs> you just have to like lose the card sometimes. Uh, I just think that overall, it makes the turn one play like I guess maybe a little bit better, but if it really wanted to be good, it should just have it so they cannot be targeted by card effects, and then if it would be destroyed, like it needs like a better continuous effect uh, on top of, again, just having the ability to banish from any card. I think this card, again, wasted. Um, uh, a new card, at least in my personal opinion. Uh, next up, we have Flint Cragger over here, which is a earth rock effect. Level three, uh, 800 attack and 1600 defense points. And it says that you can only use each of this card's first and second effects once per turn. If this card is special seven, you get to discard one card. If you do, send a fossil fusion monster from your extract to the graveyard. Okay, that's really good. And the second part of it says, if this uh, card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Then if fossil fusion is your graveyard, you turn one of your banished fossil fusions or one the card that specifically lists in its text to the graveyard. Okay, I like this card overall. Uh, helps out that archetype. Um, next up though, we have the new card for the gods. This is uh, Divine Evolution Normal Spell Card. This card activation and effect cannot be negated. The first part of it says, choose one monster you control that hasn't already had the effect of divine evolution. Apply it to it whose original type is divine beast or whose original name is the wicked avatar. And I, I really like this guy, he's really cool. Or the wicked dreadroot or the wicked eraser. And if you do, it gains a thousand attack and defense. Also, its effects activations cannot be negated. Also, its activated effects cannot be negated also it gains this effect. When it declares an attack, you can make your opponent send one monster they control at the graveyard. So one thing with this card is I really wish it was a quick play. Uh, therefore you can, you know, activate it maybe during your opponent's turn to add some extra protection to your, uh, you know, either your Egyptian gods or any of like the divine beast, the other like a god or divine hierarchy monsters. Um, this is cool that we're getting some support for the Wicked Avatar for those of you guys that don't know. Uh, the Wicked Avatar is actually really awesome. It's one of those cards where it's like, you know, as a kid, you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, this card's so amazing. And you play it in a realistic duel and it's one, it's really hard to get out. Two, uh, yeah, getting its effect off and being able to survive is, you know, a little bit tough in 2020, but it's really cool. Um, the Wicked Avatar allows you to go ahead and you attribute uh, summon it by attributing uh, three monsters and your opponent can't activate spells or traps until their second turn after their, uh, this card is normal summon. And this card is always going to be a uh, higher uh, by 100. So it's always going to be the strongest monster in the field, but then it also gains, uh, you know, that bonus of a thousand attack. But what's really cool is it does definitely protect those monsters. Um, and their activations and effects can't be negated. What I actually kind of like this for, and what it will enable you definitely to do if you're playing an Egyptian God deck, is obviously with um, the cards, because it actually targets a lot of different things if we go to the uh, monsters over here. 
and we just go ahead and select divine like they're all going to be divine beast over here so um obviously obelisk effect to pop that's not really that relevant the effect that i actually really like is when you go for a winged dragon of raw um, a lot of times with the newer egyptian god support what you're doing is you're tributing multiple monsters your opponent has sometimes they just have what one monster and then you're at 7900 attack and you attack into a monster and you have to basically hope that your opponent cannot deal any damage the following turn but what i do really like with this is that when it uh, declares an attack you just make your opponent send one monster to control the graveyard and then with that extra 1000 boost you can go ahead and maybe just one shot your opponent so i like it specifically for wing dragon of raw and I, I think it's a really cool card uh for some fans but is it going to make the meta if it was a quick play it would help out so much um I really, really wish that uh, it did have that quick effect, and um, it also made it so that it can't be targeted for like the rest of the turn or something like that. I mean, I know that it says that its activations cannot be negated, or if it just had some other bonus to it, uh, like basically we need Mound of the Bound Creator in a quick play uh, spell form to, I guess, make them what I would consider a lot more viable in the game. But let me know, guys, your thoughts on any of the new cards down below in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in, and if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a like on it, and if you are new here, make sure you guys are subscribed with that bell notification on because we'll be dropping gameplay of some of these very very soon i'm really interested in, in the little princess deck but i think it's going to be a little bit lackluster at, honestly until they get more support but take care guys and i'll catch you on the next video and i'm signing out peace